let's say we want to lift an oversized library book weighing 20 newtons, hefty book, and we're lifting it one meters vertically down from a shelf. So we start at point A, we take it down from the shelf and carry it our three meters back to our table. We want to know how much work does gravity do on the book? All right. To consider this, let's think about what's going on. We have the weight of the book equal to mass times gravity. This is not work. This is the weight of the book. And this is acting downward. The work done by gravity is going to be the work done by gravity moving it from A to some, let's call this point here, C. Maybe I'll write it someplace where we can actually see. So work from A to C, plus the work done by gravity, moving it from that point C to our final point B. Our path goes downward, and then it goes to the right. And during that path, the force of gravity is always pointing downward. So the work done by gravity is going to be the force of gravity, mg, times the distance it's moving, here's the distance from a to c, times the cosine of the angle between them. I'll call this theta between a and c. Between a and c, gravity's acting downward, and the book is moving downward. So the angle between them is zero degrees. The cosine of zero degrees gives us one. So we can say this gives us one, and we're just left with the full value here. We can then add on MGD going from C to B times the cosine of the angle going from C to B. And now this angle is a 90 degree angle. What that means is because theta CB is 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So this whole term goes away because this evaluates the zero. So whatever this other stuff is, once we multiply by zero, it's gone. That leaves us with just the first part, MGD, AC, which we can plug in values for. MG is just the weight, 20 newtons. And the only reason I wrote it as MG is because I wanted to use work as W. And so using a lowercase w and an uppercase w over here was going to be tricky. So that's why I moved to mg, but I'm substituting in for mg the 20 newtons, which is the weight. And I'm substituting in for this distance, the one meter, so we get 20 newton meters, or 20 joules worth of work. So gravity does 20 joules worth of work. All right, we're done reading. We move the book back to its original place on the shelf. What's the total work done against gravity, moving the book away from its original position on the shelf and back again? Well, let's find the work done on this return path by gravity, and then we can do the net work as the sum of those two things. For B, the work done by gravity as we go straight from B to A is going to be the weight our weight is mg, right? So this mg times the distance as we get from b to a times the cosine of the angle between them. Here, we need to do a little bit of geometry if we want to figure this out. Luckily, we can do that. This angle here is theta. We can say that my angle theta is equal to the inverse tangent of my opposite side, one meter, over my adjacent side, three meters, which gives me a value of 18.4 degrees. If I look at my mg as I travel back, now the angle between my path and Gravity there is this angle here, which is going to be 90 degrees plus that 18.4.
So we can say this is going to be the cosine of 108.4 degrees. Okay, so far so good. One thing I'll point out though, is that when we plug in values here, we get 20 newtons for mg. And then my d is the square root of three squared plus one squared in meters times the cosine of 108.4 degrees. And these terms right here do something kind of interesting. They give us a negative one. That's because they, if you think about it, the path we're taking back consists of moving this way and moving this way. And we only care about, or gravity only cares about when we're moving up or down. And the up or down distance we end up moving is just one meter. So we did the geometry and you plug it in, but you end up getting that the work done by gravity as you move the book back is equal to negative 20 joules. So gravity did 20 joules of work as the book moved down. And then as the book moved back, even though it took a different route, it still is traveling the same vertical distance. And we only care about vertical distance when we're talking about the force of gravity that's acting vertically. We can now combine these and say that the network done by gravity is 20 joules minus 20 joules. We just add up those two legs of the journey. So we get zero joules or zero as our network. That's the work done by gravity. That means that's also the work done against gravity. This gives us a more general way of looking at the work done by gravity. And we can say that the work done by gravity is going to equal negative of the weight times my final position minus my initial position. So if I end up at a higher position than I started, gravity did negative work. And if I end up at a lower position than I started, gravity does positive work.